What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Stefan here from App Stuff, and today we're diving into one of those underrated features that can make your app feel instant and connected, which is deep links. So I'm gonna show you how to set up custom URL schemes in Swift UI and how to handle them cleanly with the new on open URL modifier. And ultimately we're gonna tie it all together with this new application that I'm building, the Supabase Marketplace, which I'll be building out as a full series very soon. So this is gonna be a fully functioning marketplace where users can view listings in a feed, filter them like we see here, and also create listings to upload to the marketplace. And you'll also have a user profile with your marketplace stats and it has full authentication capability as well. So keep an eye out for this, guys. This will be coming soon in partnership with Superbase to the YouTube channel. So a quick demo of what we're gonna be doing here, guys. Pay attention to the tab we're currently on. We're currently on the Home tab. I'm gonna hop over to my Reminders app where I just created this special link here. And this would normally try to open a link in Safari, but if I click on this now, it's going to open my application back up and actually navigate to my Profile tab, which is super cool. That's what we're gonna be demoing in this video. And we're gonna go through how to do this all on the simulator. So let's go ahead and hop into Xcode and get started. So first things first, guys, to make deep links work, we need to register a custom URL type inside of Xcode. So you're gonna to head to your app target, and then you're gonna to go to the info tab, and you should see URL types here. So the identifier, we are going to type out simply the app identifier that we have. Mine is com.stephandallas.supabase marketplace. So whatever app you are doing this in, just make sure that matches. And then for the URL scheme, we are just gonna type out the app name as one word. Mine is Supabase marketplace. Make sure there's no colons or slashes or anything. It's just the app name. So basically this tells iOS, hey, if any link starts with Supabase marketplace or whatever your app name is, open this application instead of trying to open this in Safari. So once this is set up, we can handle the incoming URL with the on open URL modifier in SwiftUI. So let's jump into that. So we are gonna head over to our app file. This is what mine looks like for this application. And this is where we can handle the incoming link using SwiftUI's on open URL modifier. So on my content view, guys, I'm gonna go here and say dot on open URL, and it's gonna give me the ability to perform an action and have access to the URL that we opened up from within this closure. So let's just go ahead and add a print statements here saying print opened, and we'll say string. So I'm gonna now run my application again and I'm gonna to go to my Reminders app, and that this is how we can set up this deep linking. Guys, you just need to go, um, I'll show you, I'll walk you through how to do this as well, because we need an actual link to click on, right? So while we're waiting for that to launch, just go to your Reminders app, and just create a new reminder, and type out your app name here, uh, or whatever that URL scheme was that we provided, and then say colon slash slash, and then anything you type after that doesn't really matter. You can just make something up. So just do profile, for example. So now, if I go here and click on that and say open, we can see that we opened that exact link name, right? So if I go here and I create another one, paste, I could say maybe uh, feed, and just click out of that. Now it should become a link, click on that, and you'll see that we opened that link right there. So that sh should be working for you. Um, and this shows you exactly what we can do with this modifier, so that's super cool. So let's see what we can actually do with this now. I'm gonna go hop into my main tab bar file, and this is a very simple tab bar. You guys could pause the video and just build something out very similar to this, a tab bar with three simple tabs. And we are gonna go over how to take this incoming deep link, parse it, and then perform an action, which in this case will be navigating to a particular tab, which is going to be based on the link information that we get coming in from that uh, deep link. So we can apply this on open URL modifier anywhere, guys. So we can go here and say on open URL, perform, and look at the URL here. And here, guys, we basically wanna parse the URL and navigate to tab, right? So we're gonna take the incoming information from the URL, parse it, and then navigate to a tab that corresponds with the information coming from that link. So what we need to do first off is have a state property here that keeps track of our tab selection. So we're gonna modify this property here, which will ultimately change our tab view for us, or our selected tab for us. So on our tab view, we then need to say selection 
that's going to be our selected tab. And we're also going to use an enum to represent all of our tab items. So that's a much more robust approach to this. So now we'll have this enum called tab kind or tab item, tab identifier, doesn't matter. And we'll just list out all of the different tabs that we have here. As we can see, I have feed cell profile. So we just need to make this hashable. Next up, we're gonna go here and give each item a tag. So this will be tab kind dot feed dot hash value. And then we will go and supply that or set that tag for each one of these uh, tab items as well. So this will be profile and this will be cell dot hash value. So now each item has a tag, right? So next up guys, how do we parse this URL and ultimately set the selected tab based on that information? So we're actually gonna make an extension on the URL type. So here we're gonna make an extension on URL and we're gonna have a property to help us determine if this is a deep link or not. So that will be based on the apps, the URL scheme. And in this case, mine is called Supabase Marketplace. And if you guys remember, this is exactly what we set up in our URL type in our info tab, right? This is my URL scheme. So when we write this extension on our URL, we can check to see if the scheme is equal to this and that will determine if it's a deep link or not. Next up, we're gonna say var tab kind, which is going to be of type tab kind, but it's gonna be optional. And we're gonna make sure that this is a deep link first. We're gonna say guard deep link else return no. And then we're going to do a switch on the URL host. So we're gonna say switch host, and we're gonna say case, and this is going to be feed, and we're going to then return dot feed. If the host is profile, we'll return dot profile. And if the case is cell, we'll return dot cell. And by default, we will return nil. So now that we have this computed property that looks at the host of our URL, and here we could print our host just so you can see this. URL host is the host, right? So in this case, guys, the scheme in this link is Supabase Marketplace, the host is profile. Here the scheme is Supabase Marketplace, the host is feed. So when we parse that information coming in from the URL, we are going to compute the tab item that we want with this computed property here. And then on this on open URL field, we're gonna say guard tab or guard let tab equal URL dot tab kind else return. And then we'll say self dot selected tab is equal to that tab. And that's literally all we have to do. The trick is writing this extension on the URL. Shout out to an article written by Donnie Walls for helping out with this. This is really cool. Um, let's see, selected tab. Yeah, we need to change this to our tab kind. And this is going to equal dot feed to start. So now we're gonna run our application, guys. And we should see that our deep link functionality is completely working. So with the app up and running, let's keep an eye on the console as well as the app on the simulator. Let's go back to our reminders app and let's click on profile. So we notice it deep, link in, deep links into our app, which is good. And it tells us that the host is profile. That's also good, but it did not navigate over to our profile tab. And the reason for that guys is we actually need to adjust these tags. We don't want to use this hash value. We can literally just say dot feed, dot cell, and dot profile. So how you set the tag up is important. We don't wanna use the hash value. We can just use the raw enum value there to set the tag, and that will actually fix the issue there. So let's go ahead and try this out one more time. We'll start off on the feed, go to our reminders app, click on profile, and guys, check that out. We noticed that it automatically deep links into the app and it navigates to our profile tab. So let's test it out again by clicking on the feed item. We click that on that and it goes to our app and changes us back to the feed. So that's incredible guys. That's how you work with deep links in Swift UI. So anytime you wanna link from an email, a website, a text message or anything, this is a super powerful feature to help your app feel more connected to your user. 
And if you guys are interested in building out this awesome marketplace app with Supabase as a backend, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for when this series is going to become available. Should be sometime next week. And also guys, make sure you check out other videos on our YouTube channel. I did just released a full social app clone with Supabase. We also uh, have a free preview of our new AI and machine learning course on the channel as well. So make sure you like and subscribe and check out all of our videos. And also make sure you check out our website as well, where we have bunch uh, access to a bunch of professional courses, including courses on interview prep, fundamentals, where like I said, we just launched an AI and machine learning course for iOS developers, Swift concurrency, programming fundamentals, everything you can need in the from the fundamentals all the way up to the advanced stuff with our Pro Plus app clones. So these are now available in the membership. So you guys can get access to how apps like this, like Instagram, Messenger, and Tinder are built at a production level. I myself worked at Meta and know exactly how these apps work at a high level. And that's what it, the type of builds that we build out with these Pro Plus series. Guys, these apps can handle millions of users at scale. And these have all the techniques you need to become a serious senior level or staff level iOS engineer. And you guys can get access to all of this stuff by becoming a member with us for just 49 bucks a month or 299 bucks a year, which saves up over 60% on the monthly membership. So you get access to everything that I just mentioned, all of our pro courses, all of our learning resources, which include things like cheat sheets and guides, we have an iOS ma uh, interview mastery ebook, a Swift concurrency cheat sheet, and an iOS interview cheat sheet. These two are free. This one is a paid item. But make sure you guys just go ahead and check us out on at appstuff.io. We have everything you need to take your iOS development career to the next level, whether you're trying to get a job or you are simply trying to release an app to the App Store. Whatever your goals are, we have stuff for you on the website. So make sure you check us out. Thanks for watching this video. Once again, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys later. Peace.